many, many moons ago. I don't feel like I should give dates because it's so long ago. Uh, <laughs> you may have. To. In the mid 80s, David Mamet and Bill Macy, William H., came to NYU to teach an acting technique. And they basically, basically took 25 of us and we studied with them for two years. And they taught us the acting technique that we teach today called practical aesthetics. And they had already incorporated the name, the Atlantic Theater Company, and done a couple of radio plays. And when we were graduating, um, I was elected the first artistic director of the company. And they basically turned the name over to us and said, go out and create your own work. And that's how it started. What was unique about this group and this technique was you know the the approach the approach and which was all about serving the story of the play and this practical aesthetics that Macy and Mamet developed was a technique of acting I guess sort of in response possibly to the method where they liked they wanted to create a technique that had created a workable set of tools both for actors and directors and designers and everybody to uh, tell stories and analyze stories and it was very action based and that I bring that up just because it served us very well over the years and it's how we still operate all about serving the story of the play similar actually to the moscow art and the group theater we were an ensemble that was very committed to writing to new writing mm -hmm. there was this balance between the desires and uh, investment in the ensemble and the investment in the writer these guys spent a huge amount of time i think it was the summer of 87 and even before that putting together this incredible document, <clears throat> which actually was one of the reasons we lasted, because they had this document to sort of look at that set out the principles and philosophies of the company. So our mission was to tell stories simply and truthfully based on, with utilizing the ensemble and using the practical aesthetics technique. And so the way it's, it's changed over time is that, you know, Neil is, is representing the ensemble in his choice of plays still with that same mission. And when I came in, I didn't, I, I both of us, Mary and I were I told all, him not to run. Yeah, and, and we, I, I literally, I was terrified of it. I was mainly an actor at that point. I was directing a little bit. And uh, I, I didn't think I would either last or want to do it more than two or three years. I was terrified of it. And then you start enjoying it and then you, 21 years later, you're like, what happened? When we, we settled into this beautiful theater, which was a big change in, in uh, the fall of 1991. And so that, once you start having rent to pay, and once you start trying to build a consistent audience of members or subscribers, that means that you have to present seasons. Chelsea was not what it is today. It was totally uh, different. We were yeah. pioneers and happy to be. Yeah, we landed here and right after that we put <laughs> in new seats and rebuild. We were all, you know, just doing the work ourselves. It started out with a bunch of workers who were committed to ensemble and committed to the play. So there was something greater than each individual. You know, we were always more interested in the whole than the individual. And sitting in the theater, I feel like, I can't believe that we have this opportunity. And it's been so humbling because I remember one of the first plays I did was with Larry Brigman and then with Peter Maloney. These are, you know, actors who, New York actors who I thought I've been watching and all of a sudden I'm on stage with them. And then those opportunities have, you know, F. Murray Abraham working with Ethan Cohen. There's still a part of me that when we do it, even though it's our house, I can't believe that we get to work with these people.